Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Normally on this channel, I make fun, goofy 3D printing tech related videos. However, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different today. I'm gonna be reviewing the brand new 12.9 inch iPad Pro M2 and seeing how this handles all of my favorite 3D design apps and hopefully helping you determine if you should consider picking up one of these for yourself. If you didn't already know, the iPad has some absolutely amazing 3D modeling, 3D design, 3D augmented reality, 3D scanning, 3D slicing, you name it, somebody's out there making a cohesive, amazing app that you can use directly on your iPad and most of the time that you can work directly with the Apple Pencil. Which is why I really wanted to make this video specifically about the new iPad Pro M2. Uh, because I don't think anybody else out there is gonna be making videos directly around this. And I know there is a 3D community that is out there actively designing and making things specifically on their iPad. So I'm not gonna really go in deep on what are all the new features and tech specs of the new iPad Pro. However, here is a quick rundown of what's new on them. The first thing it has is the brand new M2 chip, which should allow for faster processing of 3D files or just in general, if you're doing things like video editing directly here on the iPad compared to even last year's model, the M1, which coincidentally also have here that I had been using up until now. And this is visually, these look the exact same. And also one small thing to note, this is supposed to be space gray and space gray. The M1 iPad is slightly darker than the new M2. I wasn't expecting that. I figured they'd be the exact same colors. But they say with this new M2 chip, it should be up to 15% faster than the previous M1 version of the iPad Pro. It's also the first iPad to support Wi-Fi 6E, which I don't have a router that supports, so I'm not gonna be able to take advantage of that unless at some point I decide to upgrade my router. But it's great to see that I guess they're kind of future-proofing this. One of the other few new features for this brand new iPad Pro is that it has the ability to record video in ProRes. However, I can't for the life of me find a setting anywhere in the iPad to enable this. This is normally under the camera settings on your iPhone, but I can't directly find that here on the iPad Pro. I'm not sure if it's enabled or if it's just hidden under some other sub menu. I just haven't been able to find it. So if you know, let me know in the comments. I'd be interested in checking that out, potentially making some new TikToks directly off of my iPad and then editing them on my iPad. And the feature that I was most excited for, and honestly, the only reason why I really wanted to buy this new iPad is for the new Apple Pencil hover feature. So when you get your pencil close to the screen, it's gonna provide a little hover effect, which is really great when it comes to 2D design or 3D design specifically and being able to visualize the size of the object or the, the brush that you're working with before you actually apply it to your project. However, it's kind of broken for most of the 3D apps and we'll get to that here in just a minute. Also briefly wanted to talk about some of the accessories for your brand new iPad Pro M2. The old Magic Keyboard. This is the one that I picked up last year for my M1. It still fits and works with this brand new M2 iPad. So you don't need to pick one up if you already have one. Also, occasionally you can find these on sale over on Amazon. This is easily my most used accessory that I own. I basically had my iPad on this almost all day, every day. I use this for emails, social media work. It's just a really convenient way to be connected. It's like the best accessory for the iPad at this point. Also the Apple Pencil. There's no new pencil that you need to buy or anything like that. The same Apple Pencil 2 that you might already own or that's already up and for sale, you can work directly with your brand new iPad Pro M2. So no need to worry about anything like that. I don't think it works with the Apple Pencil 1 and the hover feature is specifically only gonna work with the brand new Pro iPads and your Apple Pencil 2. And at the time of recording this video, the Apple Pencil 2 is still on sale over on Amazon and significantly cheaper than buying directly from Apple. I'm also a big fan of the Sketchboard Pro and happy to say that the new M2 iPad fits perfectly inside of the one that I've already owned. And if you don't already have one of these, I highly recommend it's a great large surface to work on, especially when it comes to those long 2D or 3D sessions. And of course I couldn't pass up the opportunity to do some 3D printed accessories. So here's an iPad stand that works great with this new iPad Pro M2. I'll have links to that over on Thingiverse. And we also have the Apple Pencil toppers, which you can find over on my Etsy shop. All right, let's take a look at the new hover feature and how it's impacting my favorite apps. This was honestly a thing that I was looking most forward to with the new M2 iPad. And unfortunately, it just does not work very well. And I know some of these apps are gonna get updated to better support it, 
but it's just kind of disappointing when you got a brand new toy and nothing works right. So here's a quick example of the hover functionality here where if I get my Apple Pencil 2 close to the screen, it's gonna start lifting the icons up. And if I go into one of my favorite 3D modeling apps, Nomad Sculpt here, this is sort of like ZBrush, but developed by one person and is absolutely amazing. It's such a crazy powerful tool here. But with the hover functionality enabled, you get some kind of craziness that goes on every once in a while. We're here, if I'm in one of the brushes, let's say I wanna add a little bit more details to the edge here, where I could come in and sort of sculpt this out further. But if I wanna come in and adjust the radius here of how large this brush is, it kind of wigs out. <laughs> If the pencil, if the tip is too close to the screen, it just maximizes to the to the full extent. And if you're holding the Apple Pencil in one hand like I do and trying to pinch and zoom around, every once in a while it might just kind of like that where it <laughs> distorts, where it's getting too close to the screen while you're trying to do some other function. But other than these hover issues, Nomad is running so incredibly smooth with the new M2 iPad. I mean, honestly, it ran pretty well with the M1. It just feels like it's running even smoother now with the M2. And you're gonna run into the same type of issues if you use Forger, which is the another alternative to Nomad. This is actually produced by Maxon, who owns ZBrush and uh, has been updating this. There's been some, a few updates that have gone into this recently. So looking forward to seeing how they might incorporate the the hover functionality into this. You'll run into some of the same wonkiness, especially when rotate rotating here uh, with this where it thinks the pen is closer to the screen than it actually is. Uh, yeah, it's again, not the best experience in the world. It was something I would hope would have magically been resolved, but uh, you know, things, ha things happen like this. <laughs> now, one of the really popular 3D apps that's more of a traditional CAD type application is Shaper 3D. And unfortunately, if you come in here to try to start a new design or open one that you've already created and you try to do anything with the pencil, it thinks that you're using a mouse and keyboard or a trackpad. So again, uh, unfortunately, it's just not working well with Hover, but thankfully you can come into the settings and under Apple Pencil here, you can completely disable under the pencil hover, the hover functionality. So you're no longer gonna get that hover functionality, which will correct all of those issues that you are running into in the previous applications. Let me close this and then reopen Shaper. And we should be able to come in and here I'll open up an existing sketch. Yeah, here I can come in and now start doing what I need to do in Shaper 3D. I'm happy to say that the Polycam app on the M2 iPad is running beautifully here. I'm having no issues with any of the hover functionality so far. Within the app, I was able to take a quick scan using the LiDAR scanner on the back of the iPad Pro of my kitchen with the help of my son here to record me while in action. And it's gonna automatically create a 3D layout for you of any room that you're trying to scan. This is such an amazing addition to this app. And it runs beautifully here on the iPad. The last one here that I wanna test out is Pick a Slice. And specifically, I wanna test out how this handles the new M2 processor inside of it. This is an application that you can actually create a file that is ready for 3D printing. And uh, it's just incredible that you're able to do this directly on the iPad. And it's extremely fast compared to slicers that are on your computer. Um, here's a great use case application as well. So if I come in here and hollow out this model, basically what this is gonna do is uh, make it so it's, it's hollow so that it's not gonna use up so much resin when I try to resin 3D print this. And then we can add holes to the underside. These are drain holes that we can add in. And what would be fantastic is when I'm using the hover functionality to be able to preview the size of what these holes are gonna be. Oops, it's trying to add a support in there. So here, if I try to add a drain hole here, that's that's that fits okay. But if I come in and try to add, a, it's, that's too large. So what I need to be able to do is adjust the size of this to be able to better see these drain holes that I'm placing around the model. So here, let me delete this one. And then we'll come on here and I will get this thing supported and we're gonna test this out. So here's what I'm really excited to test out is the processing power differences between the M1 iPad, which is on the left, 
and the M2 iPad, which is on the right. Both are the one terabyte editions of the respective iPads. Here, we've got the exact same model that we've got, the exact same slice settings. I've shared them between each other, and we're gonna come in here and try to export this out for a 3D printer and see which one can actually slice this the fastest. So, it's clear that the iPad M2 is definitely faster when it comes to slicing the exact same file here. This should also hopefully hold true when we get to things like video editing or other processing of large files here. So this again, it did seem like about a 15% difference, uh, slightly faster than the original M1. And today's video is being sponsored by Resin Labs. Andrew Sick and I developed a cable that allows you to create seamless time lapses of your 3D prints that maybe you designed directly on your iPad. And now we also have affordable, fast international shipping options. Make sure to check out resinlabs.com for more information. One thing I didn't mention was the pricing for this iPad that I purchased. It was almost $2,000, which is insanely expensive. I would highly recommend that you don't run out and spend $2,000 on an iPad or the latest iPad, unless you really need it or really see the need to upgrade to it. If you can, honestly upgrade to the iPad Pro M1. That thing is probably gonna be on sale soon with Black Friday around the corner, or you might even be able to find deals on it currently with it being on sale. You also don't need to run out and buy the beefiest uh, one terabyte edition like I have. More than likely, most of the 3D design apps are gonna run perfectly fine on most of the iPad. Uh, you know, Within the last handful of years, you're gonna be able to get a great amount of usage out of those without having to spend, again, two grand. I was kind of going all in on this because I know this is like an investment for me. I'm more than likely gonna be selling off my M1 iPad in order to continue to work with this. I'm also not too concerned about the hover functionality with the 3D apps. Again, for now, I'm more than likely just gonna be entirely disabling hover until those features are resolved in most of these apps. I still think it's gonna be really cool. It's just unfortunate that Apple released it and it just wasn't really supported just yet for all these apps. I still think there's a lot more possibilities here in the 3D space when it comes to hover versus just things on like 2D Procreate. There's hopefully some more cool use cases in the 3D space that we'll be able to take advantage of. Also in the upcoming weeks, I'll be showing off how you can do VR 3D modeling. I just recently picked up an Oculus Quest 2 or Meta Quest 2, whatever the heck the name is now, and checking out a bunch of different VR applications. Very excited about the possibility of doing digital VR sculpting. It's kind of wild. I also wanna say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making goofy content and trying new things. If you're interested in things like my resin 3D printer settings, you can find those as part of my Patreon. And let me know down below what your thoughts are on the iPad Pro M2 if you consider getting one or if there's some other apps that I should be taking a look at because I'm all ears for that sort of thing. I'm actually thinking about doing some live streaming of just me doing some sculpting here. Let me know. Hey, thanks again for watching y'all. I'll see you next time.